Today I'm going to create a beauty image with super saturated colors. Plus, I'll share the steps I take to achieve the best and most accurate color results. I'm Lindsay Adler, I'm a portrait and fashion photographer based in New York, and if you know my work, you know I love color. Super saturated, extremely vibrant color. And fellow photographers ask me all the time if I'm doing anything special to make the colors look so rich. Well, first and foremost, my use of color begins in the planning stages of my shoot. How does color tell my story? How can I use all of the colors in the scene to create pleasing color harmonies? I consider the color of the light, the color of the background, the color of the makeup, the color of the styling, all of these have to work together for a successful image. Every color, every hue is on purpose. And I think too many people think of color as an afterthought, but for me, it's one of the most utilized tools in my photographic toolkit. So today my concept is to create a beauty image all about cool, analogous colors. And that means the colors I'm using are next to each other on the color wheel, which this creates a very calming effect. I've selected a purple headpiece from designer Lori Sun, and this is the focal point of the shoot. So all of the colors in the frame, including the makeup, the background, the gels, they're all going to be in the blue and purple hue range. Now there is, of course, a more technical side of successful color. Now first and foremost, I always shoot raw, 100% of the time, and this provides me with the most color information possible, and it gives me flexibility in editing. In my raw processing, I aim to get the colors as close as possible before I pop over to Photoshop. So for example, uh, I set up the lighting and I'm shooting tether and I use an X-ray color checker passport too. And I use this to give me correct white balance, but also to create something called custom camera and lens color profiles. All right, so here's how it works. I roughly set up my shot and I take a picture of the gray card and this is to give me correct white balance. I can remove any color cast to the scene and you'll see here a little bit of a shift to the color balance and the tint. For the most part, I find that when I shoot a flash white balance with my Profoto strobes, the change in the white balance is pretty minimal. The other power of the Color Checker Passport is in creating custom color profiles. So when you shoot the Color Checker Passport, you can create a camera and lens profile using a plugin. And you're making sure that each and every color is perfectly and accurately represented. And this is true whether you're using Lightroom, Capture One, or other processors like On One Photo Raw 2020 or Luminar as your raw processor. What you do is you create a new profile depending on the camera and lens combination you're using. And for this shoe, I'm primarily using a Canon 24 to 70 and a Canon 24 to 105. So I go ahead and I create a custom color profile for my lens and camera combo. Notice how when I apply the profile, the blues and purples in the frame, they shift. They become more saturated, they become more accurate. Now, another important part of the process is to work with a profiled and calibrated monitor. So no matter where I'm looking at my color, I wanna make sure that it's accurate and consistent even when I'm moving from setup to setup. I use the i1 Display Studio to make sure that whether I'm on my laptop or my desktop at home or my monitor in the studio, I'm always looking at accurate color. Now, if you haven't used the i1 Display Studio before, X-Ray has recently completely redesigned the software, so it's super easy to use. The software and the user interface makes calibration very fast, it's effortless, it's not overly technical. In fact, it's easier and more affordable than it's ever been. Now, by the way, if you have the Color Monkey display, you can actually just download the i1 Studio software completely for free, and it's going to work seamlessly with the hardware you already have. It's basically just making the entire process a heck of a lot easier. Now that I've taken time to explain what I do to get great color, I wanna take a look at my setup. Here, I'm using four lights. My main light, I've used a five degree grid and this creates a tight area of illumination on the face. Next, I've lit the background with a zoom reflector and a purple gel. And what this does, it helps unite the color of the headpiece with the background. I like this look, but as I'm looking at the headpiece, I think it needs a little bit more separation from the background. So I've added an additional light, our third light with a grid. Notice how there's now a glow appearing behind the headpiece. And last but not least, I've added a fourth light in order to emphasize the analogous color palette even more. What I've done is I've added a blue color to the shadows in front of the subject by using a zoom reflector and a blue gel. During this entire shoot, I'm shooting tethered. 
So the images are coming into the computer and I'm using custom color profiles and I'm making subtle tweaks throughout the entire process, sometimes to the white balance, maybe sometimes to the saturation. And this is helping me to better visualize the end result of my shoot. Right, so here you can see the image straight out of camera. Now you can see the subtle changes achieved by adding a custom color profile. As you can see, beautiful saturated color, it isn't achieved at just any one part of the process. It's a combination of your concept, your calibration, your capture, and your post-processing. If you want to see the tools used in this video, check out the links below or visit xrightphoto.com. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe. See you next time.